Steve, just checking in. You good? My dad. He's a handful. I know. Sorry you had to see that side of him. Hey, Lizzie. No sweat. It's not on you. Your dad's just being protective, I guess. With the wedding coming up, he's probably just thrown off balance. I'm not losing any sleep over it, I promise. He won't ruffle my feathers. You're such a gem for letting it slide. But honestly, he crossed a line. His words were like daggers, and I was just as stunned by how he lashed out at you. It's unacceptable. He's my dad, sure, but lately I've been questioning if he's even capable of compassion. How many times do I have to drill into his head that you're not some dropout? I saw you trying, really. But if he's set in his ways, what can we do? Marrying you won't suddenly win me his approval. Patience is key, I suppose. I'll keep chipping away at him, slowly but surely. It's just... He's my dad, but I can't help feeling this growing resentment, especially seeing how he treats others. Even mom's on edge about it all. She senses he's not the man he used to be. Is that so? Your mom's feeling the strain too. What's going on? I shouldn't dump all this on you. Not when we're about to start our lives together. It's not right to cloud our happiness with this gloom. Lizzie, we're in this together. Tough talks and all. The wedding's all set for next week at the courthouse. We're a team now. Whatever's on your mind, I'm here for it. You sure? I mean, if you're up for it, maybe we should all sit down and clear the air soon. Absolutely. Lean on me, Lizzie. I'm here for you, through thick and thin. Just thought you should know. I was completely stunned. To think that my daughter would choose to spend her life with someone who had not finished high school was beyond my imagination. I'm blaming myself for not speaking up sooner. It was all so sudden. But then again, when is the right time for such revelations? Tell me, are you hiding this little detail and hoping it will never come out? Charles, good to see you again. And for the record, there was no concealment. I'm an open book. Always have been. But it seems there's been some sort of mix-up. I'm not sure where you got the idea that I was a high school dropout. Let's cut to the chase, shall we? You saw an opportunity in my wealth, didn't you? That's why you're with my daughter. Be honest. It's the least you can do. If that's your game, then you better step away from this marriage now. You've got it all wrong, Charles. Lizzie and I share something real, something deep. She's the love of my life. And I've never felt this way about anyone before. Hold on. When did we drop the formalities? I don't recall giving you permission to use my first name. Address me properly as Mr. Harrison. My apologies, Mr. Harrison. I didn't mean any disrespect. I thought since you introduced yourself by your first name, it was acceptable. But let's be clear. There's nothing for me to confess. Our wedding is just around the corner. And nothing's going to change that. Imagine how wonderful it would be if you could see that Lizzie has found true love. This wedding has barreled ahead with such speed. It might be too late to slam on the brakes now. But make no mistake, I will never accept you as part of this family. Marrying a dropout, a nobody, it's disgraceful. Lizzie has turned a deaf ear to everything I've said. She's headstrong, that one. But fine, let the wedding proceed. I'll just sit back and wait for the inevitable split. Then, I'll be there to pick up the pieces. Mr. Harrison, don't you think you're being a bit extreme? Our love for each other is strong. Even without your blessing, wishing for our divorce is harsh. That's not the kind of thing a father should want for his daughter. I won't be lectured on what's right for my daughter. Your opinions on this marriage are irrelevant. It's a mistake, plain and simple. Lizzie is living in a fantasy, and I swear, I'll expose whatever charade you're playing. There's no charade, Mr. Harrison. I'm just me. Nothing more, nothing less. I've been nothing but truthful with you and Lizzie. The wedding is fast approaching, and I'd like nothing more than to have a good relationship with you, for Lizzie's sake. I hope we can find some common ground. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have matters to attend to. Wow, I never thought this day would come that I see my daughter walk down the aisle. I still don't approve of her marriage to you, though I already know that it's not going to end well, Steve. Well, the marriage has already been finalized, sir. 
We're officially family now by marriage. Will you just accept the reality that we are? A high school dropout isn't a suitable match for my daughter. And you know that. Why are you wasting our time and money? Sir, I know you're just looking down on me like you're all high and mighty. But it's not true. I don't know how many times I have to repeat myself about this. And do you know that she's my daughter? The daughter of the president of one of the most successful trading companies in the country? I never thought my daughter would be so blind as to fall for someone who didn't graduate from high school and is just a big gold digger. I have also told you this a bunch of times, sir. I'm not marrying Lizzie for the money. That's not my intention at all. Well, if you say so, Steve. Okay, you're going to do a speech in Chinese for us. Wait, what? I'm sorry, but what are you talking about, sir? What speech are you referring to? Actually, I'm not going to force you to do anything. But if you think about it, isn't it the right thing to do? As a father-in-law says, since you're the groom, after all, you're the one marrying the president's daughter. The next person who will take over the company when I retire. Since some of the directors and the company are originally from China, how about you greet them in Chinese? You do know Chinese, right? It's important for everyone in the company to know a few business phrases. And of course, our company has gone global recently. A lot of our work partners are Chinese, so they do a lot of business talk in their native language. What do you think? Will you do it or is it impossible for you, Steve? <laughs> if you feel that way, maybe you should get out of this marriage while you still can. Well, sir, I never said it was impossible, but you kind of sprung this on me, which puts me under a bit of pressure. Wow, but you're still being open to the idea. <laughs> Many of my executives and friends are foreigners, thus some of the elite professionals in the business. Since you're not a shy person, I'm sure you'll have no problems with being able to speak to them in Chinese. It'll probably end up being embarrassing for you. So maybe it's better to not get married now and avoid all the hassle. <laughs> well, I think we've allotted time to have some speeches done during the ceremony. I guess I could squeeze it in somewhere. Of course. Let's give you a chance to say something for the sake of my friends. I'll ask you to say the final remarks at the end of the ceremony in Chinese. Alright? Wow, since you're only a high school dropout with hardly an education, I'm sure you'll find it impossible to do. <laughs> no, sir. I think I'll be perfectly fine in doing this. Please, let me greet your executives. Wow, I can't believe this. You're definitely going to get embarrassed and screw up everything. I just know it. Okay, if you think so, Mr. Harrison. But I'm sure everything will work out just fine. The ceremony is about to start shortly, so there's not much time for you to prepare yourself. At least just panic a little and break out into a sweat so I can have something to laugh about later. <laughs> I don't think I'll get embarrassed, sir, since I don't mind talking in front of a lot of people. I'll do my best to give my speech. Okay, if you say so. Just don't embarrass me as well. It really would be a shame to let my daughter marry an incompetent high school dropout. No, it'll be okay, sir. Please don't panic over this. I've got it all covered. I think you think I'm going to embarrass you. In fact, Mr. Harrison, is it true that you don't understand a word of Chinese at all? Excuse me? What on earth are you situated here, boy? Well, you're probably going to wonder what I'm going to say in the speech, right? I'm sure you'll be able to understand every single word, sir. Well, if your Chinese is good... I'm sure I'll be able to understand everything you say. Don't you dare think about provoking me right before you marry my daughter. I'm sorry that you think that I'm doing that, sir. Please, enjoy the wedding ceremony. I know I'm going to. I can't wait to see my future wife at the altar. Hey, what the heck's going on here? What's the meaning of this charade? How is it that you can speak Chinese of all languages and you can actually speak it really quickly? How is that possible? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Didn't I tell you that I can speak Chinese? It's actually called Mandarin, by the way. After I graduated from high school, I went to China and... 
Well, you know, when you're in the country long enough. Now, hold on just a minute there. What? You're telling me that you could speak this Mandarin fluently? I spent the last years of my teenage life in China. Don't you think it's natural to learn another language since you're living on their society? You kept going on and on that I was a high school dropout. But Lizzie only said that I spent up until high school in the States. Wait, so you're really not a high school dropout at all? Are you serious, Steve? Even though I corrected you so many times, Mr. Harrison, you just didn't want to listen to what I had to say. I couldn't make any detailed corrections either. So you lived there for a bit. So that's why you're able to speak their language. Wow, I can't believe how petty you're being about this. Why must you act so strangely around me? I've done nothing to make you act this way. Well, I don't get your attitude towards me. Why are you being like this? Why did you have to doubt my abilities so much when you know nothing about me? That doesn't matter now. After your speech, the executives left without even talking to me. Don't you think that's a bit odd of them to do that right in the middle of a wedding? I feel like your attitude completely changed after you did your speech in front of everyone. Oh, okay. Is that what you're wanting to know about? As I thought, of course you didn't understand what was going on in there. Wait, what? What are you talking about? What way did I treat people? What did you say to them? It means you couldn't understand the word I was saying at all. I knew you couldn't speak, let alone understand the word of Mandarin at all. Can you? I should have expected it though, since you've decided to throw a curveball at me right before the ceremony. How dare you be so rude to me, you little swine? That's not how a boy should talk to his father-in-law. Of course, I know how to speak a bit of Chinese. I need it for work. So yes, I know how to communicate in it. But even though you were speaking that fast, I'd hardly understand if you spoke that fast in English as well. It's bad to talk so fast when people are trying to listen. Oh, really? Is that so, Charles? I'm sorry for speaking so fast that you couldn't understand me. I guess it would be better to lower my speaking to a beginner's level. Why are you acting like this towards me? You've got no right to talk to me like that. Are you trying to pick a fight with me? That's not my intention at all, Mr. Harrison. You should know that. By the way, I think all the Mandarin speakers at the venue understood what I said. I think my speech was a pretty good level of speed. You really didn't understand me, did you, Charles? I don't give a crap anymore about the speed anymore. Just tell me what you said, please. Why did my executives behave like they did? I just revealed your misdeeds to them in Mandarin, that's all. If you learned a language, you'd know what I said, Charles. Wait, what? What misdeeds are you talking about? I've not done anything wrong to them. Or any other employee, for that matter. Of all the people that were in that room, you know yourself best, right Charles? Even though you pretended to know Mandarin, you just went about your business. You proved important meetings without understanding the context of those meetings. You actually used that to your advantage so that you could get more money out of them. Did you really think that I wouldn't find out about your dishonesty, Charles? What on earth are you talking about? How dare you accuse me of such things? How on earth would you have found out about this anyway? I haven't done any of those things that you said. As someone who doesn't work for my company, how did you find out about these rumors? Well, to be honest with you, Charles, I'm not actually an outsider. Give me some credit for knowing a lot about your company. What the heck's that supposed to mean? Why are you trying to say jaded? You're making no sense to me at all. Maybe it's because you're not listening to me. The vice president, who's my new mother-in-law's brother, hired me to work at the company. Wait a minute, what? You're seriously not found a job, have you? You're not actually working at my company, are you? Oh, but yes I do. If I'm married to Lizzie, I might take over the company someday. In the future, I thought it would be better to start working at the company as soon as I possibly could, so I can get a good feel for it. Are you kidding me? You actually started working at my company. How did I not hear anything about this? This is absurd. If I told you that I wanted to work at the company, you'd get annoyed. And it would become a troublesome task anyway. The vice president prepared me for the job and processed my application and resume. It went smooth actually. 
Thanks to you, I was able to understand more of your attitude and the actions you take at work. I understand that you're not a good fit for the president's position. Hey, you can't just turn around and say something like that to someone in a higher position. You've got some nerve, haven't you? Well, all of this is what I said in my speech earlier, Charles. You just don't get it, do you? What? What are you talking about? Are you going to tell me what you said in your speech or what? I told the executives in Mandarin how incompetent my future father-in-law is as president of the company. That's why they reacted the way they did. It's possible that they've gotten angry with how you handled their interactions and you could be fired from your precious presidential position. Do you seriously think that they're going to dismiss me, the president of the company? They've got no right to do that. I'm the president. End of the story. I'm the one who has all the decision-making power. They can't possibly throw me out of my chair. You're sounding like a dictator, Charles. And executives don't like that. The way you've treated them is going to be the result of your dismissal. Besides, it was originally my mother-in-law's father's company. You only inherited because you're her husband. You do know that the vice president of the company was originally supposed to take over the business, right? Well, that position fell to me because I was more capable of being the leader of the company. The face of the company? Where are you going about messing things up now? Uh, okay. I don't know what happened during that time, but if the board of directors were to have a meeting right now, no one would be siding with you, Charles. I think everyone would follow the vice president and vote for him to be the new face of the company. What the heck? Do you really think that it's okay to do that to my own company? Did you seriously want to degrade your new father-in-law that much, Steve? Do you think Lizzie is going to be happy that you've done that to her own father? Well, she might not be too happy about it, but she understands that this might have happened during the ceremony. Huh? What are you talking about? You didn't tell my daughter that you were going to do this, did you? I already told her in advance that this might come up if you made me do something that I wasn't fully comfortable with. I knew I had to talk about this kind of thing so people knew what you were truly like at work and to the people around you. It wasn't a decision that I made on my own, Charles. After a careful discussion that Lizzie, her mother, and I had, we decided to say something. You talked to my wife about this? Why is my wife involved in this? Why did you drag her into it? Don't you know that she's my ally and that she'll stick by me? I'm sorry, but it sounds like your wife has given up on you, Charles. That's why Lizzie and now my mother-in-law are on my side about this. Is this seriously happening to me right now? How could you all stab me in the back like that? My own family! I've done nothing to any of you! Well, I guess the girls decided that they wanted to dethrone you. They were getting sick of the way you were treating people. Have you ever tried to take care of your family, Charles? Mentally and emotionally. It seems like all you care about is yourself. What the heck are you trying to say here? Go on, say it. You say they're your family when you talk about them to other people. But do you really care for them? Do you look at their needs? Do you support them financially that much? Or do you just give all that money you earn to your secretary, Charles? You're not giving her the company's money, are you? I haven't got a clue what you're talking about, Steve. Who is this secretary you speak about anyways? Up until very recently, your wife has been investigating what you've really been doing whilst you've been at work. She's already got all the evidence she needs. It seems like she was holding off until the wedding was over though. But it seems like she's hit her limit. What do you mean she's hit her limit? What's that supposed to mean? Why would my own wife investigate my whereabouts? Why would she invade my privacy like that? Um, maybe it was because you were acting super suspicious towards her at home. Think about it, Charles. Don't you think it's safe to assume that she's known about your affair for a good amount of time now? I'm sure your wife has been in so much pain because you've been betraying her for such a long time. I'll never be like you. I'd never do that to my wife. Why would you say something that you know nothing about? What I do is none of your business, Steve. Don't you know how much money I've made as a company president? A lot, and it's great. What's so wrong with using your own company's money for yourself? The company's money belongs to the hardworking people and the company itself. Not you. 
I'm not surprised you don't understand something so basic as that, Charles. It was only through your marriage that you were able to get the job anyways. Now, you've gone and turned on everyone in the company. And you've made everyone your enemy. That's not how a president should be. There's no way that you're getting out of this one without losing everything you've got. Ah, why did something like this have to happen at my daughter's wedding? All I wanted was to embarrass you. In the end, you were the one that got embarrassed because you didn't understand the word I said. As a result, you've been made to resign from your position. Don't you think this is such an ironic story, Charles? It could be made into a movie script, to be honest. I'm not resigning. No matter how loud the vice president is, I still hold all the authority in the company. There are definitely still employees in the company that are on my side. Really? You're not talking about your secretary, are you, Charles? Well, yes, her. But I've also got other people on my side, too. I'm going to tell you something. I just received a call from the vice president. I think everyone in your sector has accused you of some wrongdoings. That can't be it, can it? It seems like they're going to make you retire from the position. Wait, what? What are you saying? How could they make me retire if I don't want to leave? Oh, Charles. I'm sure you thought of people as pawns and you were moving them around as you wanted. You know, the other employees have feelings too, you know? There are some people who aren't satisfied with the methods you've used to run things. Do you finally understand what I'm saying now? You're done. Absolutely. Finished, Charles. You're kidding me, right? You're lying to me, aren't you? What's going to happen to Kelsey? Who's Kelsey? Is this your secretary you're talking about? It seems like she was trying to protect herself first and accused you of the bad things you've done. Wait, what? No! She wouldn't do this to me. She wouldn't leave my side like this. What's going on here? Unfortunately, it sounds like you're not going to be able to avoid paying compensation though. But it sounds like your wife has agreed to reduce the amount that you need to pay dramatically. So that should be a relief for you. Yeah. What the heck? She can't just do that without discussing things with me first. This is all your fault. My family is in shambles because of you, boy. It's not my fault at all, sir. It's all your fault, Charles. You brought this on yourself. You know there are always consequences to any wrong actions a person has done. I just listened to Lizzie's and my mother-in-law's advice about how to take you down. But I knew you would try and trick me into doing something today. I was trying to dodge it, but you wouldn't let up. So I just did my best to my ability. And that was to speak in fluent Mandarin to your executives and say how crappy of a boss you are. But I had no idea that this had been planned for such a long time. This is an outrage. Please, Steve, we're both men. You know how I feel right now, yeah? Just think about how Lizzie will react to what's going to happen to me. Just come over to my side and help me out, would you? I've thought about Lizzie throughout this whole process. I'm standing by my mother-in-law. I'll also stand with the vice president. For the sake of the company and its reputation. Since you've left in tatters, you scumbag boss. What? You're just going to stand there and watch me fall? You're just going to betray me? You're the one who looked down on me as a high school dropout. You've never approved of me marrying Lizzie, right? I'm so glad that I don't have to deal with so many relatives now. It's a blessing in disguise. So go ahead and struggle being in solitude. You've got no one to turn to now, Charles. It's your own fault that got you into this mess. I guess you really can't help the situation in how it unfolds, right? After the wedding celebrations, a tense board meeting was held in which the members unanimously decided to ask Charles, the former CEO, to resign from the company. The scandalous incidents that came to light about him recently had severely damaged the reputation of the company. Charles was then escorted out of the building, and it was clear that his public embarrassment at the wedding was just the beginning of his downfall. In contrast, Steve, who had been working hard for the company, was later recognized for his efforts by the vice president. Steve had begun putting in extra hours, engaging in innovative ideas and building strong relationships with clients, all while keeping a low profile. His dedication and hard work paid off, and he continued to climb up the corporate ladder. 
Steve had a lot to prove, especially since his father-in-law's reputation had tainted the company's image. He was determined to make a successful career for himself and not end up like his scumbag father-in-law.